we are going to uh, <coughs> discuss a new lesson uh, which is called Kamma. I think you got the handout. In terms of uh, causality, <coughs> we can find a uh, few types of uh, causal relationships within the tradition. Uh, among them, Kamma plays a very huge role. Then we also need to discuss about the cause and effects produced by Tanha, that is the craving. Also the involvement of Avijja, contribution made by Avijja for the cause and effects. And there are various types of other causal relations, like we know about Sahajata, Pachya, uh, Anantara, Samanantara and so forth. We will not be able to discuss all because it's a very huge broad lesson. The next thing to be said is uh, <clears throat> the lesson of causality is much more profound than the lesson of ultimacy. So <clears throat> there are lots of things that can be discussed about causality. Among them, a very pivotal position is taken by uh, karma in any Buddhist tradition, not only in Theravadians, karma is a, uh, has taken uh, a significant uh, position uh, in among all the Buddhist traditions, also in the Eastern philosophy. In Hinduism also, karma plays a huge role. And karma is considered as uh, the reason why the beings are wandering in the samsara, commonly in Indian philosophy. Uh, then, uh, <clears throat> so we can divide the uh, religions that believe in karma and that which does not believe in karma, even in the Indian subcontinent. And uh, in the Buddhist traditions, the religions who believed, the ascetics who believed in karma was said as karmavadi, one who expound, who advocate the influence, the involvement, existence of karma within the samsara. They are called karmavadi, karmavadi, kiriyavadi. <coughs> they also said, so when someone says a karmavadi, it means he's a kiriyavadi. It means he says to uh, abiding or doing of some wholesome deeds and abandoning of some unwholesome deeds. So that is called Kiriyavadi. A Kiriyavadi means they does not praise, uh, encourage to get uh, to abandon unwholesome deeds or to abide with wholesome deeds. They would consider it as something useless, that there is no special, special benefit of doing Kusala or uh, abstaining from a Kusala. So when we come to Kamma, in uh, normal, among the normal Buddhists, like the majority of Buddhists, we always believe about karma means when we do something, we would get a certain result in the future. And also in some cultures, Kamma has a very negative feeling. Now, we say it's, it's our karma when, only when we are getting a bad, bad result. Sometimes we, we it's like uh, we, we call, uh, when we get the fortune results, we would call it the, our fortune. But uh, when we have a bad result or some, some uh, bad befall on us, we call it our karma, right? So sometimes within uh, cultures, karma also has gained a negative uh, aspect, right? But when you come to the philosophical point of view in Buddhism, karma gives both good and bad results. But when we go into the theory of ulti theory of noble truths, so there are three types of truths that we discuss in Buddhism. That is, uh, first is the conventional truth, second is the ultimate truth, and fourth is noble. Third is the noble truth. So, so our noble truth is considered as the utmost teaching, because the ultimate truth also sometimes become uh, wrong. Wrong means is uh, when, it, when it is evaluated in terms of noble truth, ultimate truth also becomes sometimes uh, negated. For instance, now when we call about the uh, conventional truth, conventionally we have something called a chair. So when we investigate this chair in terms of ultimacy, we find there is nothing called a chair but just a gathering of four elements and how they are located in the space, we get the idea of a chair. It's something that is created on the mind. So <clears throat> conventionally when we discuss with others, this chair is a truth. For example, if I say to some person, there are no chairs in this room, uh, negating the fact that there are, no, there are chairs conventionally, so that time we call, I am lying. So therefore, conventional truth also plays a huge role in our life. We cannot negate it. We cannot just avoid it and live. 
So, but when we investigate this conventional truth in terms of ultimacy, it becomes uh, null. So, there is no such uh, panyattis or concepts when we measure this idea, ideal, ideas in terms of ultimate reality. So, but when, when, we, when we come to the Buddhist philosophy in terms of the noble truths, some, some ideas of ultimate truth are also become, uh, how to say, would be negated. For example, we say kusala bring, brings good results, akusala brings bad results. But when we go into the ultimate truth, whether it's kusala or akusala, it will only produce a dukkha. It means dukkha means suffering. Because even a sukha vipaka, a good life we are getting out of a kusala kamma is considered as a suffering. So therefore, in the ultimate theory, we would say sukha, uh, kusala and akusala would give good and bad results accordingly. But when it, when it is evaluated or tested or measured in terms of ultimate uh, noble truths, we would say both kusala and akusala would give a dukkha vipaka. So likewise, in the noble truths, it's, the, it's considered as the uh, utmost in the Buddhist theory. <clears throat> so, but when we talk about karma, we are mainly talking about, the, because these lectures are mainly aiming at the ultimate, ultimate reality. It doesn't mean that the ultimate truth is wrong. Some parts of the ultimate, ultimate ex explanations become, uh, how to say, negated when we uh, think about, the, when we talk about the uh, noble truths, right? So, the thing is that the lesson of karma, the idea of karma is so vast in the Theravada tradition. Unfortunately, we have them fragmented in a huge, uh, large uh, area of the uh, tradition. So, it's very difficult to gather all the information at one place. But we'll try to uh, discuss about this uh, topic uh, day after, week after week. But it will take time. So, these lectures on karma would take... Uh, uh, would, would be extended for a few weeks because there are lots of information that we need to discuss about this topic. In simple words, 10.1, in simple words, Kamma is the mental force by which beings do acts such as killing and charity, good and bad deeds. It's the mental force. The second explanation of Karma is a restraint of unwholesome acts. And number three is certain wholesome and unwholesome mental activities. According to this statement, Kamma is threefold. We have three types of Kamma. First one is Chetana. That is the mental force by which we act. Buddha gave some teachings based on this karma. Then we have another type of karma, restraint of unwholesome deeds. Especially this is the virati, we restrain, restraining. Then we have certain wholesome and unwholesome mental activities like loba, dosa, moha, aloba, dosa, moha, seven bhujangas and eight path factors. Eight uh, path factors. So these are all considered karma in our tradition. Some have evidences found in their, uh, within, the, within the tradition, direct evidence, or others have indirect, indirect evidences. So altogether, we have 22 mentalities which are considered as karma in the Theravada tradition. 22 mentalities. I have given you the reference in the commentary. So the first one is the mental force by which we accomplish our tasks. So this is called Chetana in terms of ultimate reality. It's a Chetasika. Because of this Chetasika, uh, we do certain physical and verbal acts. <clears throat> it is the mental energy which makes <clears throat> the mental force which is necessary to accomplish certain acts is called Chetana. It is the mental energy which makes, <clears throat> which makes associated mentalities active and enables, to ex enables them to ex execute their tasks. So this is the mental, act, uh, mental force which makes our mind enable to do certain acts. There are two types of acts in the, in the, in the mainly done by the chitta chesa. First is cognizing an object. Second is we do certain mental, physical and verbal actions. Right? First one is to cognize an object. That is the very basic type of action done by, task done by a chitta chetasika. Then also in addition we perform certain mental, physical and verbal actions. So all of them are possible. These tasks are accomplished with a certain mental power. That power is called Chetana. So this Chetana is considered as the Kamma. <clears throat> it is the mental energy which makes associated mentalities active and enables them to execute their tasks. In the Nibbedika Sutta, Buddha states Chetana as the Kamma. He mentioned Chetana ham bhikkave kamma vadami chetaitva kamma karoti. So he mentioned, if you translate this, Kaya Namachaya Manasa. Monk, I say, <coughs> uh, 
uh, monks, it should be plural, monks, I say Chetana is the Kamma. One does a Kamma having thought, made a volitional intention before. Having thought before, you do an act. It means we think first to do something and we accomplish the task. This is called the Karma. So Lady Sialo states that the Chetana by which one thinks of doing a certain action is called Purima Chetana and the Chetana by which we accomplish the action is called Sannitapana Chetana. Because if you look into the uh, statement given by the Buddha, we have two types of Kamma. Chetana ham bikave kammam vadami. Chetana is called the kamma. And they say cheta itva kammam karoti. Having thought, we do the action. So first cheta itva means having thought. That is called purima cheta. It's not the, here cheta, cheta itva doesn't mean the chitta. Here is the chetana. Have you have intention to do something. And then we perform the action. For example, you first think to offer something to a monk. Then you do the action. So first chittas are called Purima Chetana. The Chetana by which you accomplish this task is called Sannitapana Chetana. Then <coughs> Chetana is the, for example, it is the energy of the mind. We can also give a term like effort. But this effort is not, don't misunderstand it is Virya. Virya is the Chesika which makes the mind, gives the energy to minds to continue with the certain tasks. Chetana is the power, is the main power by because of which the mentalities become active. Virya doesn't let the mind to mental factors to retard or because for the uh, actions like uh, actions uh, which are necessary to do uh, chittas which accomplish certain advanta, advanced tasks, it needs the functioning of support of Virya. But Chetana is a mental factor that is necessary for all the chitta -chitta. So it is the, it can be said as the um, life blood or the main energy by which the mentalities perform their functions. Virya is like the supporting, supporting factor in, 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 for the Chitta Chesikas to perform certain tasks. So here when I say effort, don't misunderstand it with the Virya. It is called, it's like effort have a few meanings uh, in our, our handouts. So here effort means the force or the power, intention of the mind to accomplish a certain action. Cheta is the force or effort of the mind due to which mind can accomplish certain tasks. So when it arises is Javana Chitta, it is normally called the Kamma. So when we call Kamma here, we are talking about the Chetana which arises with Javana Chitta. Please keep this in mind. Because when you go into Pathana, whatever the Chetana arises can be called as Kamma. But when we come to this causality explanation about Kamma, we are not going to explain it in such a level. So, uh, but uh, if you go into Pathana, the Kamma Pachaya, there are two types of Kamma Pachya. That is the one which arises, Chetana, which arises in all the Chitta Chetasikas, uh, together with all the mental clusters. And then the <coughs> Kamma, which can bring results in, uh, in the future, good or bad results in the future. But here we are just talking about the Chetanas, which arise in Javana Chitta. So this is a quite a different approach I'm making. I'm not following the I'm not following the Patana approach. Neither I'm following the normal Kamma approach because normal Kamma is it will give good or bad results in the future. So I'll come to that point. We are not only talking about this type. We are talking about the Chetana and other mental qualities, 21 mental qualities which arise in Javana Chittas, right? Which arise in Javana Chitta. Even the Chitta ka, Chetana or the qualities which arise in Arahans will be discussed here, right? In the today's lecture. But when we go to the next week lecture, we will be talking about the Kamma that will bring good or bad results in future, right? That will only include the Cheka Chetana of the non Arahans, which can bring results, right? So here we are not talking about the Chetana which arise in all the Chittas. And we are not only talking about the Chetana which arise in non Chetana which arise in uh, all, we are talking about the chet, uh, mental factors which arise in Javana Chittas, not all the Chittas. And also, we are talking about, <coughs> uh, we are not only talking about the Chetana or the qualities which arise in non Arahans, but also of the Arahans, right? So, I'll come to, we'll, we will understand this when we finish the bo both lectures today, what talk, so sort of approach we are making. So, here, so, for example, uh, some acts like uh, good and good acts are also done by the also done by the arahants. So, if you go to Dakina Vibhanga Sutta, 
they mention in the final stanza it is mentioned yo vitarago vi uh, vitaraga sadatanti dana so it means a person who has abandoned defilements give dana to a, a person who has abandoned the defilement this is considered as a very high level of a deed the only thing it will not it will not give a result in future so therefore when we talk about the kamma we also include the actions of the arahants but this doesn't mean that their actions are going to give results in future they will have certain effects we will come into that point at the end of the second lecture so anyway so we are talking here about the mental qualities which appear in javanchitas now we are talking about the chetana at the moment now think about a person he wants to offer something to a monk so first he thinks that i will offer a, a food vessel or food to a monk so first he thinks about it then he grabs the vessel holds it goes to the monk and gives it to him right so when he it is done when he gives up his uh, food vessel to the monk his dana is complete but for this dana to happen the material how to say physical act to happen for him for first he has to move his limbs towards the food vessel carry it and place it on the monk's hand for that there should be a certain physical strength in his body not only the physical strength that we have by our nature but at that moment there should be a certain movement so this movement is also backed up by a certain physical strength this strength is called a vayu is called vayu dhatu in abhidhamma we call it chitta kriya vayu dhatu that is vayu dhatu produced by the mind that vayu dhatu moves towards the intended direction because of the a certain intimation which happens we together with it which call it kaya vinyati kaya vinyati because of kaya vinyati the vayu dhatu is directed towards the intended direction so then they is able to place the food vessel in the <coughs> monk's on the monk's hand so this uh, vayu dhatu is produced by the chitta chetasikas of giving so while he was doing that act this vayu dhatu was produced by these chitta chetasikas among this vayu dhatu among these chitta chetasikas the foremost was the chetana because if there was no such a energy to do that physical act if there was no such a energy in that mental cluster those vayu dhatus would not be produced so therefore the most important mental factor in that act was chetana so looking into such actions which are necessary to do verbal and physical deeds buddha mentions chetana aham bikave kamma chetana is the kamma as he mentioned right so mainly when he says chetana aham bikave kamma madami he mainly intended these physical and bodily and physical acts as the kamma and in mental acts also chetana will be taken as the kamma but there are few other mentalities that are more prominent than the chetana when it comes to the sphere of kamma so that's why we say there are 22 mentalities that act as the kamma chetana is one of them among them among these chetana is more prominent in physical and verbal acts because unless there is a intention to move the body to speak out some words we are unable to perform these actions so that is what this uh, paragraph says so volition is considered chetana is considered the kamma in such physical and verbal acts <clears throat> so then uh if you go to the uh, next page uh uh so one to the fourth paragraph under 2.2 in the wholesome side chetana is considered as the kamma unwholesome side chetana is considered as the kamma in doing acts in doing evil acts plural such as panati parta adinna dana kamesu micha chara musavada parusavacha spisunavacha parusavacha and sampapala right all these acts are done with the help of a very powerful chetana not only that if you hit someone if you do some cheating to some person like in a, in a shop or somewhere so these all acts are done with a certain chetan right in uh, chetana is the foremost all these unwholesome deeds in the wholesome side in dana chetana is the foremost we normally say dana chetana is the foremost hence called the kamma more it is mentioned that while abstaining from seven types of evil deeds certain in certain occasions 
in the in certain occasions chetana can act as the kamma when we have the intention to prevent from something at that time chetana is also active virati actually virati also act as the kamma on that occasion but it is mentioned in some occasion chetana can act as the kamma maybe if he maybe if he make some physical or verbal movements to prevent himself or uh, some other reason i am unable to explain this clearly but uh, this it is said that chetana is also counted as the kamma in such occasions sometimes so then more over the initial stages of bhavana chetana arising while meditating is considered as the kamma because i mentioned in Ch- when we say the uh, acts of the acts done by the mind cognizing a particular object is also considered as the act doing physical verbal mental acts are also considered as the actions of the mind so therefore in meditation we perform uh, purposely focus on a particular object or we purposely look into the object as anicca dukkha anatta so this intention of doing the meditation is also considered as the kamma in in uh, in that occasion so therefore uh, chetana act as the kamma in all dana sila bhavana and also in the physical and verbal and wholesome acts right it can act so this is chetana is considered as the kamma in that regard then when talking because we mentioned there are three types of kamma one is chetana the other one is the restraint the virati chetasika so when we are talking about the virati restraint from unwholesome acts as mentioned above three virati chetasikas plays the most prominent role while abstaining from seven types of evil deeds according to the occasion three virati acts as the kamma accordingly so when we restrain from uh, killing at that time for example uh, we uh, determine not to kill someone at that time it becomes samma kammanta it, be- it is the kamma if we restrain from killing for the sake of livelihood it becomes samma ajiva so likewise virati also becomes the kamma while restraining from evil deed in the meritorious deed of sila three virati are taken as the foremost whereas chetana is also taken as a kamma slightly so it means uh, chetana also acts as the kamma considered as the kamma but virati is the foremost so that's why is the mention chetana is also considered in some cases for the sila but virati is the foremost in terms of sila so when we abstain from certain act <coughs> virati is considered as the kamma when it comes to the unwholesome mental activities may i mention there are mental activities good and bad mental activities when it comes to unwholesome mental activities while leading covetousness it means abhijja abhijja means wishing others properties to be yours is called abhijja not just liking for example we see someone has a very nice car or someone has a very nice thing so we consider may this be mine so that kind of a wish is called abhijja it is not a good deed if you don't stop abhijja what happen you can go into the adinada so abhijja is also uh, how to say uh, beginning part of the adina dana right adina if it, and also vyapada is wishing to kill if we cannot stop our vyapada in the end it may turn into killing there is a possibility that it may turn into killing so <clears throat> these are the mental activities covetousness and uh, how to say when we have real covetousness wishing others properties to be ours at that time abhijja the kamma of abhijja loba act as the kamma act as the kamma not the chetana chetana is considered as less prominent on that occasion a loba is considered as the kamma this is how the tradition defines the kamma then when we yield abhijja vyapada vyapada means we are uh, wishing others destruction at that time dosa act as the kamma then we are holding wrong views at that moment micha ditti act as the kamma chetana becomes less prominent on such occasion that is how it is explained in atasalni and it makes sense because in those acts these unwholesome qualities are more prominent unlike for example when we kill an animal we still have dosa with it but just dosa is not going to accomplish the task it has to be physical or verbal movements visible uh, verbal utterances or ordering someone to kill another or the physical movement has to be there in order to accomplish this killing so therefore chetana for surpasses dosa in that act so it act as it is taken as the kamma but when we are just wishing something 
Maybe we utter his destruction, maybe show it with gestures, but still the main purpose is not to kill him, is to wish or to yield some unbending or unattractive qualities, a mental force towards him. So therefore, dosa is more prominent in the Vyapada. In killing, Chetana is more prominent. In wishing others destruction, Vyapada, dosa is more prominent. That is what we have to understand. In stealing, Chetana is prominent because we have to make a verbal utterance or to order someone to steal or physical gesture, physical uh, movement to steal the thing. But when we wish others things to be ours own, we are, uh, uh, how to say, uh, Abhija, at that time, Loba is more prominent than the Chetra. Then, when we hold the wrong views, it is very clear, it is the, uh, how to say, the Vichaditi, which becomes prominent in the in sense of Kama. In the wholesome side, while developing qualities opposite of covetousness, when we say Anabhija, at that time, Aloba is more prominent. When we develop loving kindness, giving up the Abhyapada, when we develop Abhyapada, at that time, Adosa is more prominent. When we uh, develop our Samaditi, correct view, at that time, our wisdom is prominent. So, on such occasions, Chetana is not considered as the Kamma, but Loba Dosa Ditti, Aloba Dosa Amoha are considered as the Kamma. Not the Moha. Moha is not considered as a Kamma here. It's only Ditti is considered as the Kamma. Right? Ditti is considered as the Kamma. Then when come to the <coughs> meditation, in two suttas, they are the Bojanga Sutta and <coughs> uh, Arya Magga Sutta. Buddha mentioned uh, seven bojangas and eightfold path factors as the kamma. You can see this in the sutta itself. Directly, the Buddha mentions these are called akanha asukha kamma. The kammas that leads to the kamma kaya, the destruction of the kamma. So, in three suttas, bojanga sutta, aryamanga sutta, and also uh, vithara sutta. In these three suttas, Buddha mentions. Three types of kamas as the ka, sukha, akanha, asukha, vipaka. If I write it down in the uh, word, akanha, asukha. Kama. Akanha, asukha, kamam. So we have uh, kanham, kanha, vipaka. Sukha, sukha, vipaka. Kanna sukha, kanna sukha vipaka. Kanna is defiled, dark. Sukha is purified. Sukha is good. So akanna asukha means neither dark nor purified, no no white. So they need Buddha mentioned kamma kaya san. Kamma kaya san means for the destruction of kamma. I think we already discussed what is the destruction of karma. It's not like the destruction of Anusya. Karma cannot be destructed. What we can do is, when we destruct the Anusya, karma becomes enabled to give a partisan. That is called karma khaya. So there are karmas that lead for the destruction of the karma. So in the Vittara Sutta, Buddha mentioned the Chetana towards this karma khaya is called uh, ka, is called the uh, Kama. So at that time, the commentary mentioned that is the Vivatta Gamini Chetana Bhavana. Viv Chetana Vivatta Gamini Bhavana. It is not the Bhavana that we lead for our uh, be born in the uh, divine realms or to be born in the uh, Brahma realms. If the, bar, the Chetana of the meditator who leads his uh, meditation for the destruction of Kama is called Akana Asukka uh, Kama. That Chetana. In the Bhujanga Sutta, Buddha mentioned the seven part, seven factors of enlightenment, Bhujanga, are considered as the Akhanna Asukka Kama. In the Aryamanga Sutta, Buddha mentioned the eightfold path, <coughs> that is the Arya Attamika Magga, that is uh, Arya means uh, uh, eightfold path is considered as the Kama. So, therefore, <coughs> this when, so the teachers mentioned the when the meditation has grown up to a higher level. 
So the comma, the are uh, four seven bojangas and eight four path factors are considered as the comma. So they are also included in our list of comma. So the Atasarini says they are uh, all together, <coughs> Chetana and Chetana Sampayutta Dham, all together, 22 realities, mentalities are considered as the comma in the within the tradition of Theravada. So that is the <coughs> point that I want to discuss mainly with regard to the Kamma. Kamma is a <coughs> plays a huge pivotal role in our tradition. So it's not only the Chetana which is considered as the Kamma within the tradition. There are all together 22 mentalities which are considered as the Kamma. If I remind them, Kam Chetana is is very important. Then we have three Viratis. So altogether we have four. Then Loba Dosa Ditti, Aloba Dosa Moha. So six. So this 6 plus 4 is 10. <coughs> then, uh, <coughs> is that, was I correct? Yeah, uh, yeah. 6 plus, <coughs> yeah, we'll count it. <laughs> okay, Chetana. Chetana, we have 3 Virati. <coughs> then we have Aloba, Adosa, Amoha, Loba, Dosa, Diti. Right, sorry. Diti. So altogether, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10. Then we have 7 Bojanga. Then 8 Maka. So here we have 15. So there are some are repeated, right? Some will be repeated. Because we have Amoha here, Amoha here, and Amoha here. So if we, if we, if we reduce them, and also we have 3 Virati repeated in the 8. Eight path factors, right? So when you reduce the repetition, it will be 22 realities. <coughs> 22 realities which are taken as the come, right? 22 realities which are taken as the come. <coughs> if you have any questions before I proceed to the next topic, <coughs> okay. So then we go to the 10.5. When we generally talk about Kamma, only the foregone 22 mentalities which arise in the Javana Chittas are considered as Kamma. Right? These Chetasikas can arise in Bhavanga Chitta, Vipaka Chittas, they are not considered as the Kamma. Only the Chittas which arise in Javana Chitta are considered as the Kamma. Javana Chittas are, so what, are the, what, uh, the, what is the specifically, uh, <coughs> what is the uh, specific qualities of Javana Chitta? They are together with the force, Savega. They have extra force. And impulse to cognize the object and to perform various physical, verbal and mental activities. Sausa. They have a higher impulse in doing certain acts. And also an intentional attribute, Sabhyapa. So these are the qualities of a Javana Chitta. They are Sabhyapara, they are Savega, they are also Sahusaha. These are the qualities of a Javana Chitta. So they are different. Based on these, they are different from Vipaka Chittas. And also they are different from Samkiriya Chittas, Manodwara Avajana and Panchadwara Avajana. Right? They don't have the extra force. Above said mentalities also gain the Savega, Sausaha and Sabhyapara attributes when they arise in Javana Chitta. So these 22 mentalities we discussed as the Kamma also get these attributes when they arise in the Javana letter. So when we talk about Javana, Javana is a certain place or position in the, in the mind stream. Not in terms of location, in terms of successive minds. So, when the mind stream occurs, mind occurs, rise and pass away, in a, in a certain place, the Javanas arises. Right? So, this area, and when, this, when the Chitta is appearing as Javana, its strength, its ability, impulse, compulsion, they all change. So, it, it increases at the Javana level and then it decreases. So likewise, <clears throat> when Javana Chittas are happening, the strength of the mind increases. Strength of the mind increases. But when you look into this board, sometimes you may feel mind exists and it is increased. No. When a certain Chitta, right, the other mind has already passed away. So the level of the mind, if you talk about the strength of the mind, it goes up and down with time. So, so this, when the mind, the level of the intensity of the strength of the mind is higher at that time, 
we are discussing about the karma. Not while we are sleeping. Not while the mind is in a lower state like Vipaka Chittas or uh, some Vipaka Chittas or some Kiriya Chittas. Not that that level. When the mind is having a very high speed, high speed means high force or an intentional attribute or a, a higher impulse. So at that moment, we call the, the, these mental qualities which appear at that time is called the Kama. So then these karmic mentalities can be put into two categories based on the nature of the mind stream in which they arise. These meant kamas can be put into two categories. First one is the kama which arise in the mind stream of which latent defilements are not eradicated. So sanusaya santani, uppajanaka kama. The kama which arises in a mind stream in which latent defilements are not abhorrent. No, it means the non arahant Then the kama which arises in a mind stream of which latent defilements are fully eradicated. Niranu se santane upajanaka kama. So these are the kamas of arahants. They are not going to give results. Right? They are not going to give results. So in terms of Abhidhamma, the word kama refers to the chetan. So don't get uh, worried about this terminology. Kamma, Arahant is not producing a Kamma, he is not doing a Kamma which will give a result in future. That is a very clear fundamental in our tradition. We are talking about the, these attributes, I am giving a certain name to them as Kamma. <clears throat> they are the Kammas and these Kammas are, appear in the mind stream of, uh, it can appear in the mind stream of an Arahant, it can appear in the mind stream of a non-Arahant. Right? So then we come into the next point. Both types of kammas have effects to this life and only the first type of kamma which arise in a mind stream with latent defilements can give results in both present and future life. This is the point. So the first type of kamma, the kamma which arise in a mind stream in which latent defilements are not eradicated. It means our mind streams like ours. Right? It can give results this can give effects to this life and to the future lives. But the kammas which arise in the mind stream of an arahant, these attributes are not only giving results, results means effects into this life, not to the future lives. Right? Not, they are going to, not going to give vipaka. So when we say kamma, another term that we get is vipaka. <coughs> Vipaka. So this is the two terms that we are commonly uh, accustomed with. Kamma gives Vipaka. So in this lecture, today I am going to divide the effects of Kamma into two groups. They are Kamma have effects. Kamma gives results. These results are called Vipaka. These results are called vipaka. When we say the effects of karma, we can call use the word vipaka for that because the word vipaka has been used by Buddha in various meanings. When it comes to Abhidhamma, we say exactly exclusively vipaka refers to vipaka chitta chaita sikas. But the term vipaka has been even can be used even for rupa in other 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 contexts. Right? So, but when we are teaching Abhidhamma, we normally say, when we are teaching Abhidhamma, we would say Vipaka is exclusively to Vipaka Chitta Cheta Sikas. But if you go into the suttas, you find the term Vipaka has been used in various ways. There are, Vipaka means a result or an effect, outcome, that is also called a Vipaka. So here, I would call the results as Vipaka. This doesn't, is not only including Vipaka Chitta Cheta Sikas, I am including Kamaja Rupa Zika. So here the Vipaka term includes Kamajrupa. Kamajrupa means whatever is produced by Kamma is called Vipaka. It can, for example, sometimes we say Vipaka for the Upathambaka function. Sometimes we call Vipaka for Upapilaka function. Sometimes we call Vipaka for Upagataka function. Right? But if we, if we go exclusively to in Abhidhamma terminologies to define the word Vipaka, we can only use it for Vipaka Chitta Chesikas. 
So Vipaka Chitta. So this, when we when we confine this Vipaka word to Vipaka Chitta Jaisikas, it it will make it more difficult to explain. So I'm using this Vipaka word from now onwards in a broader context. So if someone gains good food. If someone gains a good appearance because of a karma, I would say it's a karma vipaka. So, if someone gets a good voice because of a karma, I would say it's a karma vipaka. This is a way of sutanta way of saying. But in Abhidhamma point of view, in Abhidhamma class, when we say vipaka, we are only referring to vipaka chitta chesika. But if you go into suttas, commentaries, the vipaka, a person gets his vipaka. So, sometimes, it is mentioned now a uh, person gets a, a mansion, a divine mansion because of a result of his karma, as a vipaka of his karma. So the word vipaka has been used in many contexts in the suttas and in the commentarial literature. So therefore, here I am using the term vipaka in a more broader context. The idea is when some karmas give specific, uh, certain results which are beyond our experience which are unable for us to assume as ordinary humans. So then the Kamas also, now when we say Kama, we are talking about the Javana Chitta Chetasikas, right? Not other Chitta Chetasikas. These Kamas have effects, certain effects. So these effects are exclusively to the present life. This Vipaka can be to present or future lives, both, right? This vipaka can be to present and future lives, both. If I take <coughs> this into top of the board, end of the board. So this is what. So now a kamma can have effects. Now when we when I mention now I also define the kamma into two groups. Kammas done by arahant and kammas done by non arahants. How do I define it? The kamma which arise in a mind stream in which latent tendencies are not uprooted. The kamma which are which arise in a mind stream in which latent tendencies are uprooted. So the karma which arises in a uh, later when in a mind stream where later tendency is not more there is called karma of an arahant. So the karma which is done appears in a mind stream in which later tendency are not uprooted is the karma of a non arahant. So at the same time, karma has two effects. That is the effects of the present life that we are going to discuss in the next lecture in detail. Then the said results of vipakas that can happen to the present life and also the future life. So the arahant's kamma, kamma of an arahant, can only give these kinds of effects. It cannot give the second type of effect. A kamma of a non-arahant can give both types of results. So that is the difference. So, so whether the person is arahant or non-arahant doesn't matter. His actions would give certain effects, certain outcomes. So these outcomes can be pleasant, can be unpleasant. These outcomes also can be pleasant and unpleasant. The thing is, now we also know, which I'm, I'll be discussing in a lecture in a few weeks later, we also know the Kamma is defined as Kusala and Akusala. It's a very basic fun, wholesome and unwholesome. We also discuss this about this matter when we come to the discussion of Mula. Sobana, Asobana, Kusala, Akusala. We discuss about this matter in, 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 in brief. Actually, we discuss in detail. I think we, uh, we consider it about it. 
So now we are talking about kusala and akusala. We normally know the definition kusala will give good results, akusala will give bad results. But when we come to put the kusala and akusala into this formula, Buddha has mentioned in one sutta it is impossible that akusala can give a bad result, a good result, and kusala can give a bad result. So this teaching on fits only to this phenomenon. When a karma is giving a result in future, future or maybe in the present life, in the future life, as a vipaka, karma, kusala karma will always give a present vipaka, a kusala karma will always give an unpleasant vipaka. But when we talk about the karma, effects of the karma, when we talk about the effects of the karma, regardless whether it's kusala or akusala, kusala karmas can give good effects at the same time unpleasant effects. Akusala kammas can give good effects at the same time unpleasant effects. The effects of this type of karma, the is the when it's actually if there's no two kammas, the same karma is divided into two groups based on how it gives the effects and when it gives the effect. So based on this category, kusala kamma can give pleasant and unpleasant effects. Akusala kamma can also give pleasant and unpleasant effect. We have all lots of evidences from the, from the teachings, from the doctrine. But when we are talking about the results and vipaka, it is fixed, it is certain. Buddha has mentioned, it is impossible monks. A kusala kamma is giving a bad result. Attanametang vikkave anavakasu. It is impossible monks, a kusala kamma would give good results. It is firm and it is sure that kusala kamma will only give a good result and a kusala kamma will only give a bad result. So, first, so these teachings which we will be discussing in the next week are focusing on this aspect of the kamma. Today we are going to discuss about the first aspect of the giving results. So if I, if I read the handout, both types of karma have effects to this life and only the first type of karma which arise in a mind stream with latent defilements can give results in both present and future life. Hence the karma can be divided again into two categories based on the way and sphere it brings effects and results. Kammas that bring pleasant or unpleasant effects. Uh, in the present sphere, present life, kammas that bring pleasant or unpleasant results in both present sphere and future sphere. It should be noted that there are no such two types of kammas as stated above. They are the same kammas that have been put into two categories, considering the two ways they can bring effects. For instance, an evil deed of killing a human being brings lots of hardship to the murderer in this very life. Therefore, when it brings troubles in this very life due to the inappropriate, inappropriateness of his deed, that act is said to be a karma which brings disadvantages in this present sphere. This will be detailed illustrated below because in this regard killing a human will not only bring hardship to the murderer but also some happiness. There are some pleasant effects of killing. It doesn't mean that we are encouraging killing but there are certain pleasant effects. So the effects of a wholesome karma in terms of the pleasant sphere is not certain. When that same karma brings ill results such as giving a birth in a woeful realm and bringing an untimely death in the future existence, at that time it is said to be a karma which brings unpleasant results in the future sphere. And in case if that deed brings an untimely death to that doer, as in the case of King Kalabu who killed the Bodhisattva ascetic, it is considered as a karma that brings unpleasant results in the present, present, present sphere. So the same Panatipata Kamma, this is what I want to mention, the same Panatipata Kamma bring bad effects in the present life. Sometimes it may bring good results, good effect in the present life. So that is what normally we say, the normally people argue, killing a terrorist would bring good results. So that is uh, how to say, I am not encouraging killing, when we talk about the doctrine, we understand that we, uh, the killing can have pleasant, unpleasant both results in the present, present life. But when we are talking about a karmic vipaka, a result that would gain because of this act, 
it will always bring an unpleasant act. So the Panatipata Kamma brings certain effects to the present life. That is cause and like cause and effect. Because of this act, certain things have happened. At the same time, it brings a Kamma Vipaka to all. So the same Kamma is divided into two groups based on how it affects and at what time it affects. Right? So the nature of the effects of the first type of Kamma is not certain. A wholesome Kamma under this its first type of function, even a wholesome Kamma can bring both pleasant and unpleasant effects. And an unwholesome Kamma too, according to the first type of functioning, can bring both pleasant and unpleasant effects. However, the nature of results under the second type of function is certain. It is certain. According to the second type of phenomenon, wholesome deeds will only bring pleasant results, whereas an unwholesome karma will only bring unpleasant results. Buddha has mentioned in the Anguttara Nikaya that it is impossible that wholesome deeds would bring ill results and unwholesome deeds would give present results. And he was referring to the second type of resulting of the karma. That is the important part. Then finally, out of the two, the word Kamma is known by most of the Buddhists with the function explained under the second category. Buddhists normally talk about Kamma under this, under this function. Right? It is a phenomenon which functions beyond ordinary human observation. A person who has obtained the Yatha Kamupa Gajana has a clear understanding on how this function of Kamma happens. And also a yogi who has accomplished the Kanka Vitra and has no doubt about the functioning of the Kamma as explained under the as the second time. Right? So these are the points that I want to give. And also to conclude the lecture, looking into the exposition given by late Lady Seado, it is clear that one needs various supportive factors in order to accomplish both these type both types of these kamma. Both these types of kamma, both types of kamma. Some factors are internal and some are external. Among the internal factors, Virya and Panya are the prominent. So you need a lot of effort, a lot of wisdom in order to accomplish a curtain karma. And also in terms of external factors, listening to the other's advice, good or bad, associating good or bad friends, living in areas conducive to certain kammas are some external factors. Right? These are the points that I want to discuss. In this lecture, we discuss about the Kamma. It is 22-fold according to the Theravada tradition. It means Chetana is a part. Chetana is a, considered as the Kamma. Virati are considered as the Kamma. Loba dosa ditti, Aloba dosa moha, Seven Bojanga and Mait Maganga are considered as Kamma according to certain doctrinal facts. Then, we also mentioned the Kamma we are discussing here is only the mentalities which arise in the mind, uh, the Javana Chittas and it can appear in a non-Arahant's mind stream or a Arahant's mind stream and these Kammas that appear in a per certain person's mental mind stream can have two types of effects. Effects that can bring effects which are exclusive to the present life and effects which are outcomes as Kamma Vipaka which can happen sometimes in the present life and also which, which gives in the future lives. And the, out of these two, the, in the first type of function, it is not certain under it, Kusara Kammas can bring good and bad, uh, present and unpleasant effects. Akusara Kammas can also bring pleasant and unpleasant effects. But in the, in the second way of giving resulting, Kusara Kammas can bring only good results Akusala Kammas can bring only bad results. So these are the points that I want to discuss. Yeah, if you have any questions, uh, you can ask. <coughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what you Abhijja into? Abhijja lead to Vyapada. Yes. Can, can, can. Yeah. So, for example, someone wants to earn uh, some property. So, then uh, he would, uh, how to say, 
uh, instead of because of he he's wishing that may be willing to be, be to him right for example uh, it's very clear like uh, something like belongs to a uh, for example if you take the ajata sattu's incident he wanted the kingship he wished the kingship of the father so what he did because of his abhija he killed his father you know, automatically he got the kingship right so likewise uh, abhija can read for uh, first it leads for vyapada he wishes the death of the father and in the end he executed his kamma and he killed his father so abhija can easily lead to vyapada not only vyapada for all the other opposites okay. any questions so then we'll meet, uh, we'll uh, start the lecture in another 15 minutes